Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Heavyweights of the Faith, brief biographies of great believers who changed the world. If there ever was a man whose life was complete on earth and made complete by God in only 43 years, it was John Sungs. This scholar, a doctor in chemistry and a man of a privileged mind for science, started his life as a rebel. Born the sixth child of a pastor of a local American Wesleyan Methodist church, he quarreled frequently with his siblings, had a hot temper, and an exalted personality. But the greatness of God was later manifested when John Sung renounced all his titles and diplomas to keep the Bible as the greatest and sole source of truth. Henceforth, he writes in his diary in 1934, I will try every means to save souls, never mind if it is timely or otherwise. Saving a single sheep is more important than all other work. May God confer unto me the same spirit he gave to Charles Finney, D.L. Moody, and John Wesley. I'd rather die if God does not do that. Born in Hongshen Village, Fujian Province in China, he was given the name Zhuin, which means God's grace. He later on adopted another name, Sheng Jin, meaning noble and frugal, which perfectly depicts his personality. During his youth, he was also called the little pastor because he accompanied and helped his father in his ministry. He was expected to follow in his father's footsteps, yet he traveled in 1920 to the United States of America to study chemistry at the Ohio Wesleyan University. He finished his PhD there in just six years while he carried out all kind of humble jobs to pay for his studies. He washed dishes, mowed lawns, and scrubbed floors. This was all during a time in which he did not have a personal relationship with Jesus. After being offered an array of privileged positions that would have earned him money and a social position, he moved on to enter Union Theological Seminary in New York instead. During this time, he explored many paths promoted by his theologically liberal teachers, reciting Hindu mantras and translating the Tao Du Jing into English. But John was not happy going down this path. My soul, he wrote, wandered in a wilderness. I could neither sleep nor eat. My faith was like a leaking, storm-driven ship without a captain or compass. My heart was filled with the deepest unhappiness. But his life was changed by the Holy Spirit in 1927 when his conversion into the true message of God was fulfilled. His change was not well received by his professors, and they even locked him up in a mental asylum. During his stay at the mental institution, he read the Bible 40 times in only seven months. He later declared that this was his authentic and only theological tuition. After being released later that year, in 1927, he returned to China, eager to bring souls closer to God. His parents had arranged his marriage to a young girl, and though it was not his vocation, he had three children with her and frequently wrote to his wife worrying about her and their children's welfare. God sent John Sung all over China and Southeast Asia to preach the gospel. He converted thousands. With his honest and harsh word of truth, he gained countless souls for God. The secret of his strength was a deep knowledge of the Bible and steady prayer, getting up early every morning to pray for two or three hours. He frequently states in his diary, I wake up at the break of dawn to pray in vigilance and fervor. His prayer was a very direct and intimate connection with Jesus, as if he was a good friend staying with him as he prayed. He also had his own thorn in the flesh. He suffered greatly from intestinal tuberculosis and fistulas. My body stinks and is in decay, he recollects in his diaries, but my lips are still good and I can still pray to God. When he was too ill to write himself, his sister, Wang, penned down Sung's experiences and reflections since his childhood, as dictated by him in a diary titled, My Testimony. Between 1931 and 1938, another diary about his ministries was written by his other sister, Zheng, titled, A Continuation of My Testimony, Recollections of My Work. She preserved these manuscripts, risking her own life, and stored them in the deep jungle due to the political turmoil that China was going through at this time. Sung's last message for the church, when he already was very ill, was the following. The work of the future is to be the work of prayer. He died from his illness in 1944, being his last words, In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. 
and Jesus is all the world to me. Before passing away on August 18th, he said to his worried wife, don't be afraid. The Lord Jesus is at the door. What is there to fear? Special thanks to Inspirational Christians for use of their written biographies. Please visit inspirationalchristians.org for more biographies and articles.